Hello, hello, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel, Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show and welcome to a brand new video. I'm back again with something that I never thought I would be saying, like with my unhaul video where I never thought I would be unhauling books, but there I was. Today we're gonna be talking about books where the movie adaptation was better. I am a firm believer that the book is always better, except in these five cases, the books were not great. We'll get into them. So the first one, I actually have two copies here because I got the book and then I was invited to a screening of the movie when it came out uh, on Netflix years ago, 2018, I want to say maybe. Let It Snow, these are very, very shiny by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. I absolutely loved this movie. So fucking cute. It was fantastic and it was everything that I wanted the book to be. It's three short stories that tie in together. Each author wrote one. And this is when I realized that John Green's writing style was not for me because this was the first thing I'd ever read by him. And it was just like, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't as adorable as I wanted it to be, the movie was. This one doesn't actually say anything about what the book is about. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> so the three stories are called The Jubilee Express by Maureen Johnson, A Cheertastic Christmas Miracle by John Green, and The Patron Saint of Pigs by Lauren Miracle. Let's see if this one actually tells us. There's a snowstorm on Christmas Eve that buries the residents of Gracetown under multiple feet of snow and causes quite a bit of chaos. It's me. We know I love chaos. I'm here for it already, but it wasn't giving the chaos that it needed to be giving. One brave soul ventures out onto the storm from her stranded uh, train, there we go, setting off a chain of events that will change quite a few lives. One girl takes a risky shortcut with an adorable stranger. Three friends set out to win a race to the Waffle House and the fate of a teacup pig falls into the hands of a lovesick barista. In the movie, she works at the Waffle House. She's not a barista. So like, I love, the holidays, I love cute stories, I love romances, like the, I really wanted this book to be better than it was, and the movie provided that for me, which is, is sad to say. Like, I love movies too, but the book is always better. Somehow this one didn't get the memo. The next one, I've kind of changed my opinion on a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Which is one of my favorite movies of all time, two of them actually. And I have watched these movies combined over a thousand times. I am not fucking kidding. Every single day from like January of 2020 up until beginning of 2023, me and the kids would watch these movies every single day, sometimes multiple times in a day. The Princess Diaries movies. The second one, I think I like a little bit better, but like, don't quote me on that. I'm obsessed with those movies. It was like, a, it was an anxiety thing that was happening with me. What is going on? This hair. That's one of my hairs. Okay, we're good. So the books, um, they differ a, quite a bit from the movies and they are told in diary form. And it's just, Anne Hathaway narrates the first couple of them, which made them a lot better in my reread of the series and finally finishing the series, which is why I started liking them more than I used to. Even reading these as a teenager, Mia's voice in the books is so much more whiny and obnoxious and annoying than Mia in the movies. It was grating. But the, this time when I read them again at 30, it was a, like a tiny bit less so. And I think it was just because of Anne Hathaway narrating them. Like she did such a good job. Her voice made it less whiny, if that makes any sense at all. So in the books, Mia's dad is alive. Um, she knows him. He's just diagnosed with testicular cancer and is told that he's never going to have any more kids. So that's when she's told that she's going to be a princess, not um, after her dad dies. They're also in New York, not in San Francisco. And Lily is still the worst friend in the entire fucking universe in the books and the movies. She's got a bunch more friends in the books. And like, it's just, it's a more all encompassing experience of high school for her. Teacher's names are different and everything. All the characters' last names, most of the characters' last names are different. Even Mia's name is different. The movies hold a very, very special place in my heart um, from childhood and as an adult, um, bringing me a lot of comfort when I was very, very anxious over several years. And the books just don't, mm, they don't match up to it. I wish they did because it's, uh, 
I think 10 books in the original series and then there's a couple adult books as well but like it just doesn't spoiler alert for the movies and the books like they're they've been around for for 20 years now nicholas isn't in the books naturally because the second book does not follow second movie does not follow the books at all so i don't know i'm sticking with the movies next up is one that's weird it's weird let we'll address it crazy rich asians by kevin kwan so i read the books after watching the movie which is very weird for me i always try to read the books first i think like most book nerds hi bubbies you want to come sit yeah come here hi handsome man no free coat you gotta warn people before you show them your asshole okay and i love the movie one of my favorite movies um i also went through a phase of watching that every day for several months but the movie works better as a movie i think as a book i wouldn't have liked it as much and the three books take a different different bit of a turn in the books nobody knows that the young family is super super rich also if you don't know this follows a woman who goes to singapore to meet her boyfriend's family for the first time turns out they are super super rich he never told her. They are so rich and so snobby. They're snoshy. Is that delicious and or nutritious, sir? He's going to town on my finger right now. If you start biting me, we're going to fight. I don't want to do that. I love you. He doesn't want kisses kiss me either. Anyways, um, yeah, the, like the big difference here in the books is nobody knows that they're rich. And that was like kind of a big thing in the movie also i'm i'm holding out hope for the second movie like i really i really need that in my life and like the three books take a very different turn especially in the second and the third one and i think the books the plot as they are would not have made like a like a fun movie right so they like the books work as books the movie works as a movie i don't think cross medium they would have worked as well but I think I like the movie version of it a little bit better than the books. And finally, no, not finally. Oh, they're, they got knocked over. I lied. I got two more. This one, another one of my childhood favorite movies. And I think I read the book after I read the movie. Okay, bye puppies. I, after I watched the movie, that is. Um, and again, Anne Hathaway coming in clutch. Ella Enchanted. I fucking love this movie. And like the book was good too. But, um, there were, it's been a long time since I've read this, so I might be just pulling this out of my fucking ass right now. But I remember things happening a little bit differently in the book where something with her friend where like it was, it was much worse how she was treated instead of just saying like, I don't want to be your friend. This one follows Ella, a girl who was given a gift of obedience. Anything that she is told to do, she must do whether it brings her harm or not and her and her evil stepmother and stepsisters take that and run with it in the worst possible way they all fucking suck it could just be anne hathaway that does it for me in these in these movies i don't know i need to reread this though because it honestly has been well over five years i think since the last time i read it but the movie just holds like such a special place in my heart the scene of her singing somebody to love it just like I love it. I love it so, so much. Will I love this as much if I read it again? I'm scared. Maybe I'll add it to my August TBR. We'll see. We'll see. And the last one, I must say, I was so bored reading this whole book the whole time. I love the movie, which again, I saw first. That might... Mm, no that's not the case i didn't read all of the books after watching all of these movies i was gonna say that could be it too but princess diaries no shit did i read that book first no no i think i no i, I read them i watched the movie first on that one but let us know i definitely i definitely um read the book first anyways stardust by neil gaiman i love the movie it was so fun it was so whimsical the book was so fucking boring. The whole time, I was just bored out of my mind. I was like, when is this going to be done? Were there, there were illustrations too. And that was my, no, not, that was a chapter thing. Come on. Ah, that's what I'm remembering. This copy, because it's the movie tie-in one. It's got like scenes. Come on. 
from the movie in there, like the little glossy, reminding me of the Mary Kate and Ashley books, which should have worked in its favor. And also, like the font is giant. I also hate mass market paperback. Between the pictures and the giant font and me loving the movie, I thought I was gonna love this book, but it just fell so short for me. I was so bored. I was so fucking bored. Anyways, those are five books that the movies I liked better than the than the original source material, um, which again, never thought it would be possible. And like, I had to search for these two. I own probably, I think I'm getting close to 1500 books now. And it was a struggle for me to find five books to talk about. This isn't normal for me, but these ones just mm, not for me. The books, not for me. More power to you if you loved them. I just fucking didn't. Any more now that I'm sitting here thinking about it that I could, uh... No, not, not that I can think about the top of that. Fuck. Words are hard. That's it. That's just, that's the, that's the moral of the story. That's the name of the game here. Anyways, that's it. Let me know in the comments if you read any of these books, what you thought about them, uh, and the movies, if you've seen them too, and what some of your thoughts are on books that are, movies that are better than, than the books. Any that stand out in your mind. Or if that's just too much, or you don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones, because that's my favorite color. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph, and Threads, all at Zoe's L Booked, which I will leave a link down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video so everyone else can join in on the madness, the chaos, the shit show. With that, we have come to the very end of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds and I will see you in the next one.